This is the thing to remember. In battle, you're on your own. You're playing for high stakes, your life and the lives of your men. And you're playing for keeps. If you're going to win, you've got to use your head, your common sense, and a little imagination. Meet each situation squarely and take the measures it calls for. And now let's work out a few situations on the sand table. Here's the first one. Your platoon is an interior unit. You are commanding this squad. An occasional shell of heavy caliber has fallen along the general line of advance. I want you to show me the exact route you would follow in moving from this position to this road. Sergeant Morris, suppose you show us the route you would follow. Starting from here, I would swing a little to the right and follow the stream to take advantage of the concealment of these trees. Since I am in a little valley and can't see the squads to my right and left, I would send out one man to each flank to maintain sight contact with those squads. At this point, I would leave the valley because it turns off my general line of advance. I would then bear a little to the left and follow along this line of trees. Since I'm now on fairly open ground, I call in my two flank observers. I continue straight ahead at this point to take advantage of the cover afforded by this little hill with a low bush on it. When I get to the hill, I bear around the right side instead of going over the top where I'd be picked up on the skyline. That'll do, Sergeant. That's a first-rate job. Has anyone any questions about that? Okay, let's take another one. Your platoon has halted in these woods. Your platoon leader has told you to take your squad, cross this stream by way of this bridge, move to this high ground, and cover his crossing. He has also told you that he is prepared to cover your crossing by fire if the need arises. How would you do this job? Corporal Alexander. Well, sir, I'd, uh, I'd send my two scouts over first. I'd uh, tell them to look around on the other side, and if everything was OK, to, to signal me forward. And then I'd, I'd move out from these woods in a, well, in a squad column, cross over the bridge, and follow the scouts to that high ground. The lesson to remember is this. In passing through a defile, and the bridge is a defile, feed your men through one at a time whenever it's possible. Better still, avoid a defile whenever you can. You see, as I said before, it's simply a matter of common sense plus a little imagination. Think what the enemy is able to do in any given situation, and you'll see the action you must take to block him. Get the point, Corporal? Yes, sir, I certainly do. Good. Let's take another situation. Your platoon is moving forward. Your platoon leader has just signaled as skirmishes. You repeat the signal and the squad deploys. As you drop back to your position and look over the squad, this is what you see. What action would you take, if any? Sergeant Dean. Well, sir, I'd make these three men spread out from behind this bush. I tell this man to crawl forward to this little fold in the ground, and this one to crawl back to these bushes. And this man over here can't see what he's doing, so I'd make him crawl forward to the edge of this clump of bushes where he can see to the front. The other men look all right to me, sir. Very good, Sergeant Dean. Those are points we must all watch for when we deploy as skirmishes. Keep your men from bunching. Bunching invites fire, and the enemy is quick to accept the invitation. Also, see that they take advantage of all cover and concealment available. I don't think you'll have much trouble with that cover and concealment angle after your men have been shot at a few times. <laughs> Let's take another little situation. Your platoon has just moved into these very heavy woods. You command the left squad. The center squad is the base squad. You are under orders not to change your formation without the platoon leader's authority 
unless you are attacked. Would you take any action at this time? Corporal Gaither. Well, sir, if these woods are as heavy as they seem, I wouldn't be able to see the base squad. And that's the squad I'd have to guide on. So I'd send a man to the right to maintain sight contact with the base squad and with me. If one man couldn't do it, I could send two. That's okay, Corporal. Let's take another one, one I haven't told you anything about. Your platoon is taking part in a general advance. During the morning, your platoon leader, your platoon sergeant, and your platoon guide have all become casualties. You, as the senior squad leader in the platoon, are now platoon leader. Your platoon has reached the edge of these woods. Your scouts have just signaled forward from these woods beyond this open field. At this moment, artillery fire begins to fall in this field. A few overs hit in the woods behind you. It's a pretty heavy shelling going on. How would you cross this field? Corporal Strong. Sir, I'd go across as skirmishers in about three rushes. That's one solution, Corporal, but I believe there's a better one. This is another one of those situations where I'd forget the formal formations. This is what I'd do. I would deploy my platoon along the edge of these woods. I would tell my squad leaders that the platoon would reform along the edge of those woods across this meadow. The movement to be made by successive individual movement. This is the way it would work. Each squad leader would designate the point on the far side of the meadow where his squad would reform. He could then specify the order in which the men would move or he could leave this to his second in command. But in either event, he should be among the first to move in order to be on hand to collect his men as they arrive at the objective. The second in command would send the men over one at a time, and he himself would be the last man over. Your solution of using the skirmish line to cross an area being shelled is okay, Corporal, provided you can make it in one quick rush. But for an area this wide, it's better, I believe, to cross by individual movement. I'd like to run over a few more situations tonight, but we haven't time. However, you're going to have plenty of these problems on the ground with your squads before we move on to bigger things.